Hello everybody, this is Hayden Roberts from MST Global. I'm coming to you virtually from Brisbane, Australia, uh, and I'm here to talk to you today about improving productivity and safety in the digital mine uh, as part of what MST Global has to offer. Uh, so let's get into the, the presentation. Uh, you may be asking who is MST Global? Uh, we are an organization that was founded in Australia in 1989. And we introduced the first through the earth uh, underground solution for communicating with miners that were trapped. Uh, this was like a text message that was sent through low frequency onto their cat lamp and they received a very simple text message that said uh, to go and muster in certain places. So if you will, it was like texting through the strata uh, and that was done. Uh, the first solution was deployed in 1989. Uh, we are now currently a global business with uh, R&D, manufacturing, consultative sales, uh, deployment, support services, a, a, a full vertical organization that's focused on mining and tunneling. Uh, and really we focus on technology solutions that empower uh, you, the miner, you, the customer, to improve your productivity and safety in mining and tunneling. Very much focused on the underground, although we do have some surface operations uh, in our portfolio as well. And really our mission in life, our vision is to really work with our customers and partner with them on the journey to a digital transformation for their mind. And what I'm going to be talking to you uh, today about is, is that journey, uh, our portfolio of products that we have and services uh, and some background to that so you can better understand who we are and what we do. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about uh, the, the MST Global Organization. We are headquartered in Sydney, Australia. Uh, we have numerous offices throughout the world. Uh, you can see that in, in Australia, we have quite a, a few regional offices, along with Sydney being our corporate office. Um, we also have our R&D facilities in Sydney, in Hongzhou in China, in Tucson, Arizona. That's where all of our R&D is. And then we have these field offices and branches uh, throughout the world. Uh, in Santiago, Chile, we, we have an office in Denver, another regional office uh, and you can see on the on the map there that we we have a good coverage in all the us usual mining uh, places around the world the exciting news for us is that in 2021 we'll be opening an office in lima peru this will be our first legal entity presence in in peru and we're very excited about that and i'll talk about that in a, in a little minute uh, or so uh, currently we do business with around 340 mines across the world. Uh, that's both surface and underground mines, including coal mines and hard rock. Um, if we are to split out the, the commodity types, you can see there on the bottom left of the screen, uh, we're about a third in coal and, a th and two thirds in, in hard rock and other commodities. Uh, when you look at our portfolio in terms of who we service and who we support and, and, and where our solutions go, uh, we're focused on underground coal, underground hard rock, open pit mining, surface infrastructure and communications and tunneling. So again, a blend of, of underground as well as surface. But I want to stress that pretty much our main focus and where all of our R&D efforts goes is into the underground digital ecosystem. Currently, we have about 175 people uh, globally in the business. Uh, that's a mixture of direct salespeople, uh, project managers, support personnel, technicians uh, that go into the mines to deploy and support the solutions we sell. Uh, we also have a full R&D team uh, that does hardware and software design and development. Uh, we do our own manufacturing. Uh, we have our own factory in China where we develop our products and, and manufacture them. Um, and as I said before, R&D uh, in three centers around the world. Uh, so that's the, uh, the organization. Um, if I just give you a little bit more history so you can perhaps get a flavor for who we are as a business. Uh, as I said to you before, we were founded in 1989 in Sydney, Australia, um, and it was around this emergency communications to send text messages to trapped miners, uh, and that message would appear on their cat lamp uh, as a message. Um, then over the years, we developed from that point, uh, we took that product into Canada um, and, uh, and then started to spread that product around the world. So in the, in the early 90s, we were basically selling PED and blast pad uh, for remote initiation of blasting using the same kind of technology. Uh, from there, we went to uh, leaky feeder voice solutions and tracking uh, in the late 90s. Um, and then in, in 2000, we entered into the surface market, taking our very successful underground blast initiation solution onto surface uh, using 900 megahertz uh, uh, for that uh, remote initiation of blasting on surface. 
Uh, then in the early, early 2000s, uh, in 2004, we invested in some new technology and developed and brought to market the first uh, fiber optic wireless solution for underground hard rock that was deployed in 2004. And along with that, we also de uh, developed a, a cap lamp that integrated both the PED emergency messaging solution as well as Wi-Fi tracking inside of that. Uh, all of that was in an integrated cap lamp. So we launched that uh, and then from that point forward, we really started to get into the uh, high bandwidth, low latency communi communication space for voice, for tracking and for data communications. Um, then in 2012, we released a pretty significant product for us called the Impact NS50. Uh, this was the first one gigabit fiber backbone uh, switch uh, and again from a, around that we also did Wi-Fi uh, power over Ethernet uh, so that we could do full connectivity and power management in an underground hard rock mine. Following on from that we followed on with a, a coal product uh, in that space and then uh, in 2010 around that same time we started to get into the software side of things developing software to uh, be able to manage this network manage the devices getting into vehicle telemetry uh, proximity detection, situational awareness, uh, and basically personnel and asset man management. Um, in uh, in the late uh, or in, in 2018, uh, we then moved into uh, developing using Microsoft uh, Microsoft Azure elements and software, and we signed an enterprise agreement. Uh, so we combined elements of Microsoft Azure into our software offering, and I'll show you a bit of that in in uh, in a minute. Um, in 2019, we released our, our next generation and latest platform. So re replacing the Impact NS50, we, we launched Ac the Axon platform. And this uh, I'm going to talk about in a bit more detail on some further slides, but we won numerous awards for that. And that now is our mainstay of our underground communications tracking and automation and control platform. Um, we uh, we then launched Helix in 2020 this 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 last year, uh, and this is our next generation software platform that sits on top of of Axon to really give you a 3D geospatial view of your mine and to combine a number of elements, and I'll talk about that as well. And uh, as I said, uh, exciting for us in, in 2021 will be our entry into Peru. So that gives you some background uh, around the organisation. Um, why, why are we coming to Peru? Well, I, I don't really need to tell uh, you, you customers in, uh, in Peru why, because I think you know you, the importance of Peru. Uh, it has the largest number of underground mines in South America. Uh, very strategically important, I think, probably from an underground perspective, Peru leads uh, the region in, in their technology and their number of mines and, and what they're doing underground. So very exciting for us. Uh, uh, to come to Peru. Uh, also, uh, customers have been asking us for a number of years now to open an office uh, in Peru. Uh, we have a number of customers that we do business with. Uh, we've been supporting them from our Santiago office and Denver offices, as well as from Australia. Uh, but it's clear that uh, you know customers really wanted us to uh, build a team inside of Peru, uh, put boots on the ground and start to uh, support the customers locally. Uh, I think it's very important to do that, uh, to have a local presence. I think uh, being part of the community, um, uh, recruiting people, uh, local people into jobs uh, and then being in the community, establishing a cultural link with Peru and uh, taking on that way of doing business is really important. And I don't think you can do that from overseas. So I think it's very important to us that we we have a local office and a local presence that's staffed with with people from from Peru. Um, and uh, and you can see that from our history that that's the preferred way that we like to go. And I think also that uh, in the Peruvian market, it, there are some unique market conditions in terms of getting access to the mines, uh, you know, uh, distance to from Lima to those mines is 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 important that you're very as close as possible to them. And there's some unique conditions about importing technologies. And I think we need to do more in an end to end way to support our customers. So having a presence inside the country will help us deal with those unique market conditions and, and meet our customers needs and expectations. So as I said, very excited to be uh, coming on board in 2021 uh, in Peru. Um, so um, let's let's talk about uh, what MST Global has to offer the Peruvian underground hard rock and uh, uh, mining community. 
what I have in front of you here is the digital ecosystem from, from MST. And you can see that it's a combination of hardware infrastructure for communications and tracking and power distribution. It's also uh, a number of devices that we, from mind phones to telemetry devices that go on vehicles to iPads that's, that serve as fleet management solutions, along with wearables like cap lamps or tags for tracking. Um, and you can see there's a full range of, of uh, solutions that we have here. And it's, it's important to note that all of these are integrated and talk to one another. Um, in a seamless way uh, and Helix, our enterprise software platform, brings all of that together. So it brings together the infrastructure uh, and also the devices that we have in the field. But I think it's important to note that we are also uh, agnostic and open so that we do deal uh, or we do um, work with other uh, Wi-Fi providers, uh, other uh, software solution providers. So in, for instance, as an example, Sandvik, Epiroc, Caterpillar, will all run their automation solutions over our Axon backbone. It's a true IP network, a high bandwidth network. So you can treat it like a, a normal uh, network that you'd have on surface. So you can run anything that you want over that that has an IP um, connection. You can plug it in uh, through our power over Ethernet and run it. So it's important to know that we are an open network. You can run whatever. Uh, we're also agnostic to different wireless technologies. So currently today, we uh, we offer Wi-Fi uh, 2.8021N, uh, uh, but we also offer Bluetooth uh, solutions uh, on the on the backbone. Uh, we also offer LTE 4G. We're looking at 5G. We're looking at LoRa wireless technologies as well to bring onto the platform. So again, um, very important to know that. Um, you can see that we have a range of, of solutions here. Let me uh, move on to the next slide where I think I'll talk about something uh, in particular that's quite important, um, and that's our Axon platform. You heard me mention this is our next generation platform that's replaced the Impact platform that some of you may be familiar with. Uh, we released this about 18 months ago, and what you see before you is a very compact, uh, very easy to deploy uh, industrial switch. Uh, so the, the heart of it is the Axon core, uh, which is the main portion of this uh, of this um, uh, product. Um, and then we basically have uh, uh, the ability to bolt on upgrade modules. So these black devices here are modules that you can upgrade after the fact. Uh, one is for, for power. Uh, you can have a different sort of power voltages on here and it has uh, additional power over Ethernet plus ports. We also have an edge device that we can drop on, on into this industrial switch, uh, and that's for edge computing. It has digital input and output for automation and control, so you can actually wire this up to a pump or to a gas detection sensor. Uh, it has four to 20 milliamp inputs, and then it has relays on it, so you can actually turn on fans, you can turn on pumps, you can turn on traffic lights, all from that edge device. It can run elements of Microsoft Azure, um, but it also runs our Helix software on there for automation and control. Importantly, uh, this system runs on a composite cable that we supply, and that composite cable is a one gigabit fiber cable along, along with a power uh, copper cable uh, built in, and that allows us to power these devices ourselves. So we bring the power with us as we deploy these. So it's easy to deploy. Uh, these are bolt, uh, these are simple um, connectors that will connect each of these switches 500 meters apart um, and uh, bring power and the uh, one gig backbone. The uh, the access points are also built on the outside. The idea here is, is that you can detach them and you can make them daisy chainable. So you heard that I mentioned that uh, we use power over Ethernet plus. Uh, this is like uh, the, the thing that you have at home where you plug in your Ethernet and you can get power and power your routers and so forth. We have the same technology on this device. So you can plug in these, these access points, which is this device here, uh, and you can daisy chain them. So you can actually put additional access points powered from that same cable uh, and, and reach hard to get to places like crosscuts and so forth. Um, the other important aspect of this is that the geospatial tracking engine, as you know, in the underground space, we don't have GPS. So we have to bring tracking with us as well. And we have a tracking engine that sits inside that access point using Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to basically be able to track uh, Wi-Fi wearable tags or cap lamps or Bluetooth wearable devices. You can basically track 
where your people and, and equipment is on the ground by, by basically connecting to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, so uh, this is a very important part of what we do. Um, it's a smart integrated digital ecosystem. At the heart of it is, is this platform, uh, but we enable and we grow it. Uh, so we enable it and make it come alive with our software solution that sits on top, which is our Helix product. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in a second, but I, I want to just stress that as new technologies come along, the way we have designed this is that we can plug new technologies into our power over Ethernet ports. As an example, 4G small cells can be plugged into this device and powered. So you can have LTE running next to Wi-Fi, next to our Wi-Fi or next to a, a, a Moxa Wi-Fi access point. Remember, it's, it's an open platform. So but the key thing to, to take away from that is that this uh, platform will develop with you as as new technologies come along. You don't have to rip it out. We can actually keep adding these modules to it, adding power over Ethernet devices that give you that uh, experiences of new technologies. And I think the other important thing, again, it's, it's a journey. So customers uh, go on that journey at different a different pace. Some run, some some walk, some uh, you know, and all of them uh, we work we partner with the customer to go on that journey. So as your experiences change, as your expectations change, we modify this platform to sort of deal with that. And that's the the beauty of it. It's very it's a very powerful agile platform. So that's what I've just described to you here is the whole backbone to the communications tracking and data telemetry that we have. Uh, in the underground space. If I were to show you a different sort of example of that, um, this is just showing you the that same Axon core and how it would look with composite cables. The fact you can plug in IP cameras into that edge device uh, and you can run automation and control Helix modules to, to identify people walking uh, in the camera um, uh, to identify uh, information coming in from gas detection sensors and then obviously it's connecting to all of our devices in the field. I showed you that before. Um, we can even get to the working face. We have a Wi-Fi extender so we can even get to the working face without having to put the composite cable in. These are mobile Wi-Fi uh, wi extenders uh, called WRNs. Uh, they daisy chain as well off of our access points and you can have seven of these uh, daisy chained all the way to the working face. So if you know if you're blasting, you can remove these and it, it doesn't get damaged. So an important part of, of what we do. So um, I'm about to uh, really talk to you now about some of the software side of things of what we've done. Uh, Axon, as you can see, is the is the hardware platform. It's the smart infrastructure for tracking and so forth. What I want to now talk to you about is really our software solution and what we're doing to help you improve productivity and safety in the mine. And um, we, we have a, a chart here that, that explains a number of things. You can see here a number of applications that I think you'd all be familiar with. So. Uh, 3D visualization, business intelligence, fleet management, telemetry, proximity detection, automation and control, uh, all built around a, a tracking engine. These are all applications that I think you'd be familiar with, uh, and they're all applications that we offer as solutions in software. And I've, I've, I've added the names of some of those products on the outside, but let's just talk about uh, then also the hardware side, this is the Axon platform and the edge devices that we have, the, the mind phones and so forth, and the wearables like cap lamps, cordless cap lamps as well. Uh, you've got the hardware side, so on the one side you've got software, on this other side you, you've got hardware. And then we also integrate with third party uh, interfaces like uh, Caterpillar Vims uh, or Epiroc or Sandvik. We can uh, integrate uh, to or interface to those, those particular products to our, our software and hardware. Uh, we can also integrate to IoT sensors, which is very important. Uh, so uh, um, any kind of IoT sensor that, that's out there or even uh, some of the legacy sensors, we've designed Axon and Helix to, to talk to them. Uh, and an important part of that is IP cameras, so internet uh, protocol cameras. Uh, you can plug those into, into uh, Axon and our Helix software will interpret those uh, the information coming back from that and allow you to use AI enabled cameras and get motion detection and combine that with some other information operationally, such as uh, who's underground, what equipment's running there. So all of your fleet management types of thing. Now at the heart of this, um, I think an important concept to 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 bring uh, across to you all is that at the heart of what we're doing, we're really with Helix and Axon is that we are building a real-time 
geospatial digital twin. Um, and I'm going to show you that what that looks like in software in a minute. But that's a very important concept to 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 bring to 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 you all and, and explain. Um, the digital twin, as you know, I think you're all familiar with that. That's the digital twinning of a, of, a, of a real world manufacturing type process with a with a digital model of that. You're all familiar with geospatial, which is the the, the use of uh, information in 3D that has uh, metadata. Uh, and then you're also obviously familiar with real time. So we combine all three of those things, real time connect connectivity, geospatial information with digital twinning of, of the process to give you a quite a unique experience. And that unique experience is called Helix. That's the journey uh, or that's the solution I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, but I think where we're headed to, where we want to get to is really uh, uh, on the journey towards operational intelligence and artificial intelligence. Now you hear a lot of people talking about that and really what I'm presenting to you here is that with Helix and Axon, you can be on that journey to artificial intelligence and operational intelligence. And even today uh, with what we offer, you can get uh, that experience. So from an operational intelligence perspective, as I said before, you can have people wearing a Bluetooth tag or a Wi-Fi tag that walk past one of our access points. That access points identifies who that person is, uh, identifies that it is a person, and then basically through Helix and through Axon, turns on the fan in that crosscut or turns on the traffic lights or turns on the lights based on the fact that somebody's walked by with a tag. So you've got this whole geosp geospatial digital twin element to that, and then the ability to automate and control that information in real time. So that's operational intelligence. That's acting on information in real time and doing something about it. And not storing it in a database, but actually taking an action, actionable information, if you will. Um, and then in terms of artificial intelligence, we can offer that to you today as well. Obviously there is the, um, uh, the aspect that, that this could be uh, in the cloud, uh, that you could bring all this information back to a, a data warehouse, uh, have a number of domain experts that work on this data feed to find solutions. And we can then bring that back into the Axon platform and drop that onto uh, Axon control so that you can have real time control going on. But you can do AI today by simply plugging in cameras into Axon and using the Helix database to uh, enable that AI camera uh, to do object recognition, load counting, uh, and combine that uh, today. So you can actually bring elements of this into the workplace as we speak. So um, I think what I'll do now is just show you what that looks like, um, uh, what Helix looks like, and just show you that. Uh, so what I, what I what you see before you is a uh, the Helix uh, uh, enterprise solution. Um, I'm just showing you um, a sample mine. This is uh, uh, just a mine that we've mocked up for, for demo purposes. You can see that just like a mine planning package, because uh, it is a true geospatial package, we can basically turn things on and off in here. This is actually uh, mine designs that you would expect to see on the ground. So one of these is a, a block cave, one's a sub-level cave, one's a room and pillar. So we're just showing you that you can you can do a full, full 3D geospatial import of all of your mine designs. What's important here is that you can bring in your mine coordinate plans or you could bring in surface uh, topographies as well. So it works both for surface and underground. So let's perhaps show you some unique features in this that I don't think many other vendors have and how we differentiate. I'm going to show you a mine now in real time. Um, so this is, uh, as I said, this is Helix. It's sitting uh, in the cloud in Microsoft Azure. So it's being hosted. Uh, in the cloud in, 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 on a secure platform. Um, and what I've basically brought up here is the Oceana Gold Wahi mine in New Zealand. Um, so that's their underground mine. Uh, what I'm now going to do is actually turn on uh, all of the devices that we have. So I'm going to come over here, click on show devices. It's now connecting uh, through a secure portal to the mine and basically showing you all of the assets, uh, the people wearing cap lamps, uh, the Axon access points and all of the devices, all of the infrastructure. Uh, it's basically coming up in real time. You can see that here we're online. Um, so this is information coming from New Zealand, uh, from the Wahi mine, Oceana Gold, uh, to into the cloud securely. Uh, and then basically I'm sharing with that uh, with you uh, through this Helix uh, browser. 
in, in Chrome. And if I click on any of these, you can see that I can dive down into it. I can sort of look at that uh, 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 device or infrastructure. You can see this is an Axon Air access point. So I can actually go and do logistics and administration of that. Uh, but more importantly, I can also uh, uh, click on um, uh, any of these and you actually just saw that move from four to five. That's actually in real time. This is capturing people underground. So as they move from one zone to the other, it's actually changing. So that was a uh, uh, you, you saw a, a live movement of somebody. But basically you can track your vehicles, your equipment. Uh, all of that uh, can be tracked in here. And uh, just to show you just the versatility uh, of this, uh, I, I told you that it was a true 3D geospatial uh, platform. We can actually bring in um, uh, any number of layers from your mine planning package or from uh, your survey department. So you can bring in uh, your electrical plans into here, your refuge chambers where they all are so that you can monitor that. And what I've just brought in now is the surface topo um, of of this particular mine, and you can see that it's an open pit mine, but they they you know they they stop mining the open pit and they've gone into the underground. They went into the underground from from surface, uh, and then basically you can see how that all ties in uh, seamlessly. So I've brought in two different designs here. One is a surface WG34 surface topo topography, and the underground that you see here is all in mine coordinates. So I'm meshing two different coordinate systems. You'll notice that I can actually have multiple mines in this one instance of Helix. Uh, I showed you pixel mine, but there are, you can have, if you're a corporation that has six mines in Peru, you can bring all six mines into this Helix instance and manage all six mines separately. Uh, you can have security uh, permissions that allow you to um, keep that secure. Uh, but I think the key thing that I'm trying to explain is that this is actually really great for remote operations. Um, as well. So uh, just another thing we can we can just a quick example of how we can filter. What I've done now is just shown you uh, that we can filter on just personnel and right now currently uh, this is the number of people at this particular mine that are, are underground. Um, so um, we can do a number of, of sort of different filters. Uh, we can also um, search uh, for people as well so you can see here or we'll search for any kind of uh, uh, um, person or device, you can do all that kind of searching. On the left hand side here, I, I probably don't have enough time to go into all of this, but I talked about automation and control. I just want to show you uh, some examples that we can actually um, build business logic in here. So you hear me talk about real time uh, data streaming and so forth uh, and acting on that. So operation intelligence, just to show you, you can actually build rules in here. Uh, and so if somebody walks past a certain uh, a certain spot, uh, you can build this logic into the Helix platform that sits on device, on the Axon control in the field, uh, sensing information coming in and then triggering relays to turn on traffic lights. Uh, you can even do this with uh, telemetry solutions. So um, in, uh, in three months from now, we'll actually be releasing uh, our Helix telemetry module uh, and that will allow you to do such things as the um, uh, interfaces to, to VIMS or J1939 uh, and so forth. Uh, you'll be able to configure that and manage that all from Helix, all from one portal, if you will. So very powerful. Uh, I've only shown you a, really a small amount of what, what this product can do. Um, I'm going to switch back now just to my final uh, couple of minutes uh, and just sort of uh, finish off with um, uh, where we're going with some of our products. Uh, we have a full roadmap over the next several years uh, and you, what you see in here is is a whole range of um, of our solutions from the hardware perspective and what we're doing on that. I probably don't have time to to talk about all of these things right now, but I think a couple of key things I'd like to share with you. Uh, we do believe that LTE will be an important part of our future. So we can currently today run LTE 4G small cells on the Axon platform. You can run that alongside um, Wi-Fi. Uh, but we think that when 5G comes and we're preparing for that, that will be an exciting part of what we offer. But remembering that we think that you should keep your eyes open to all of the available wireless connectivity solutions, whether it be Wi-Fi or LTE, run them all. Uh, choose the ones that you need for your particular application and that's our position. We're agnostic and we want to get you the right kind of wireless connection. The other thing is that we're moving towards precision tracking 
Uh, that means that we're looking at uh, technologies like ultra wideband to replace Wi-Fi and Bluetooth tracking with a much more higher precision way of tracking. And uh, as you know, ultra wideband is being adopted in the iPhone and Android smart devices for directional um, uh, tracking. Uh, we're going to bring that same kind of top technology into the Axon platform without having to modify that. We're going to add uh, uh, modules on the outside that will allow you to do ultra wideband position tracking. So that's just one part of it. Um, you know, again, on the software side, we also have a range of things that we're doing. And, and again, I think uh, what we'd love to do, uh, if you're interested, we'll, we'll come to your mind uh, and come and talk to you and explain that in more detail and really understand what you're trying to achieve and how our solutions can, can work with you. Um, I think it's important just to mention in the final minute, uh, about our values. I, um, a lot of us come out of the mining industry. I, I'm a mining engineer. Uh, we have a lot of people here that have worked in mines for many years. Um, for us, safety is extremely important. And, um, uh, you know, so one of our, our highest priorities and values is safety first. I think I want to share that with you. Uh, we we want everyone to, to go to work and come home safely, and we want our customers to do the same thing. So I think it's important to, to mention that. And our values, I think, would align, I think, very much with the mining industry because we come from the mining industry. So I, I just mentioned that I think it's important that we share our values, and, and the, one of the key ones there is, is, is being safety first. Um, in terms of our, our vision, um, you know, where do we think we want to get to? Where, where, what do we aspire to be? And, and really, we aspire uh, to be your number one choice in this digital transformation journey. And I hope that we have given you a snapshot of that in this presentation. Uh, we do focus on the harsh industrial environment, in other words, mining and tunneling. We don't do, um, you know, manufacturing or Uber type uh, products. We, we are focused on mining and tunneling where the, the environment is harsh and there's a lot of challenges and we our product perfectly fits that and uh, that's the journey that we want to take you on to uh, a, a digital transformation on a day-to-day -day basis our mission is really to partner with you and that's one of the reasons why we are opening an office in peru we want to partner with our customers be closer to you and empower you to improve your safety and productivity on the mine sites and we know that every customer every mine we need to work closely with them to tailor how we deliver that solution, how we can configure that solution. And that's that's an important part of what we do. So uh, I'm very excited uh, to have been able to talk to you, but I'm even more excited by the fact that uh, in a couple of months time, uh, we'll be opening our office in Lima, Peru. I look forward to, to coming to Peru again. Uh, I've been many times before. I really look forward this time though to, to coming and uh, meeting the new team on the ground in Lima and also meeting new uh, uh, customers uh, and getting to know you all and uh, going on the journey. So thank you very much. Enjoy the conference and thank you for this opportunity to talk to you all. Goodbye.